Thank you for doing this interview. Thank you for having me here. Yeah. Could you please tell me your name and what you do? Yeah, I'm Mitsuo Teramoto from ODX, Osaka Digital Exchange. Um, I'm doing a market planning and development here in ODX as well. Very cool. So ODX, Osaka Digital Exchange. Exactly. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Um, can you please tell me what does ODX do? Yeah, we do operate an exchange base for a security token. So we actually want the investors or like the people to invest in the security token buy or sell, just like you know they trade ordinary stock, right? Mm -hmm. Japanese stock. Yeah. yeah, that's what we do. Yeah. Um, now, I think maybe there could be a little confusion for our listeners who are from other countries, but. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me exactly what is a security token from the Japanese perspective? Yeah, so I mean, first of all, I, I want to make it clear it's a different from the cryptocurrencies. Mm -hmm. So security token is uh, just a type of security. It's just you know issued on the blockchain and transferred the right over the blockchain, but it's still a security. Okay. So it's regulated under the securities regulation in Japan. And then cryptocurrencies are, you know, regulated in the different uh, by the different regulations. So I just want to make it clear, you know, security token is still a security. I see. Yeah, it's different from the cryptocurrency. Okay, thank you. I didn't know that. <laughs> I, I didn't know. <laughs> so even though we talked before, I didn't understand yeah. that. But that that is that is very interesting. That mm -hmm. um, it, it's a token that it's is issued on a blockchain. Yes. But it's not a cryptocurrency. Correct. Uh, under the Japanese framework. Correct. Okay. Yeah. That, so that's good to know. And so, um, could you tell me a little more? What is a, what is a, just for for people here and, and for me? What is a security mm -hmm. token? Yeah, it's just a, so it's a security. Yeah. Okay, let's start with that. What is a security yeah. then? It's just like you know, let's say stocks, bonds, okay. or funds. Those are the securities, right? I see. I see. And traditionally, it's of course like issued on the paper, and it's electronic right now. But uh, security token is issued over the blockchain, and then also the right or the owner is transferred over the blockchain. Oh wow, fascinating! Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay. Um, and could you please uh, talk a little bit about Japan's um, security token uh, ecosystem or landscape? Mm -hmm. What does it look like right now? Yeah. So most popular uh, security token is real estate security token. So there are other type of the security token in Japan, let's say corporate bonds security token as well. But the uh, majority of the security tokens so far issued in Japan are real estate security token. When did this start? When did these tokens start getting issued? Uh, in Japan, the regulation around the security token is established was established around 2022. So oh, wow. it's about two, three years ago. So since then, uh, issuance of the security token started. So it's about two or three years okay. these days. And you, you said that the real estate tokens are the the biggest securities being issued yeah, yeah. Uh, compared to like um, bonds or, yeah. are there any stocks as well? No? Recently, uh, there is like a movie funds. Oh, wow, yeah. interesting. Yeah, but it's very small. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. W why is it real estate the majority? Um, I think there is no good way for the people or retail investors in, uh, to invest into the real estate. Mm -hmm. So let's say if you want to invest into a uh, real estate, you can of course buy a real estate itself. But in that case, you need to have a big amount of money to buy the you know, building or like a real yeah. estate. Another option would be that there is a REIT, right? It's mm. a, you know, uh, but it is like a, you know, a portfolio of the real estate. So from the investor's perspective, uh, they are not very sure which building or which real estate they are investing into, right? But this security token, uh, uh, real estate security token, um, the underlying real estate is uh, probably uh, particularly uh, just one or maybe a few real estate. So it's very clear from the real investors, uh, uh, investors' perspective that which building or which apartment they are investing into. <coughs> so this security token, uh, real estate security token is a kind of mixture of the real estate investment and the REIT investment. That's so cool. It's very clear to which building or which apartment you are investing into, but you don't need a big amount of money just like buying a real estate, yeah. estate itself. That makes so, yeah. sense to me. And also, yeah. like as you said, uh, if you want a bond, mm -hmm. you just go buy a bond. Yeah. If you want a stock, go mm -hmm. buy a stock. Yeah. Like, it doesn't necessarily yeah, need, yeah. it doesn't need uh, yeah. a 
crypto blockchain Correct. kind of infrastructure. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. OK, that mm -hmm. makes sense. OK, I understand. Thank you. Um, all right, so uh, in, in doing some research for, for this interview, I came across this private trading system, mm -hmm. right? PTS. PTS. Yeah. Uh, um, first of all, th is this, it sounds like some kind of Japanese regulation yes. kind of thing? Yes. Could you explain what this is? Yeah. Under the Japanese regulation, we are not officially an exchange. Oh, really? We are the securities firms under the Japanese regulation, but we got permission from the Japanese FSA to operate the trading venue like an exchange. So that's called the PTS. I see, I see. Yeah. So it's like a, um, you, have to, you have to apply for a one-time one application kind of thing? Like, yeah, like, first we have to get a license yeah. to be a, you know, a securities firms then we also get additional permission to operate the trading venue like this. So I, I think in the US or other countries, it's usually called ATS, Alternative Trading System. Okay. Yeah, oh, it's, so it's basically the same thing. Okay, I see, I see, Japan. okay, yeah. all right, good. All right, and um, ODX is the first, uh, is, is the first PTS security token trading market, right? Yes, in Japan, yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, what motivated you guys to, uh, to do this thing? to be the first yeah, to do this? That's a very good question. So uh, since the issuance of the security token started two or three years ago, <coughs> once the people or investors purchase the security token, they have to hold. They had to kind of hold until its maturity, which is about seven to 10 years. So there was no easy way for them to liquidate or sell mm. the product in the right. middle of the, you know, before the maturity. But I think it was a problem, right? Because people may change the mind to, you know, uh, switch the products from one to another. Mm -hmm. Also, the situation or economic situ situation may change. Mm. So, in order for them to be able to liquidate or, you know, sell the product in the middle, they need a place to sell. So that's the reason why we, we wanted to establish mm. an exchange or trading venue so that people can, you know, uh, sell the product whenever they want to sell. And also, like the people can also come into the market to buy the product which had already issued in the past. So that's the market we wanted to create. That makes a lot of sense to me. I mean, if you look at any kind of bond market, yeah, that this is like the like what's it called uh, foundational mm -hmm. uh, infrastructure is yeah. being able to uh, buy and sell bonds yes. that haven't reached their maturity. Exactly. Right. Like yeah. Super important. Yeah. Um, and I'm guessing if you didn't have that, I mean, just the liquidity goes down. Uh, yeah, risk goes up, yeah, right? Because exactly. you have to hold it to, yeah. to maturity. Cool. Um, yeah, so definitely sounds like there's a strong need for this. Mm -hmm. um, well, then I, have, then I have another question. Why did it take so long? Because it seems so important. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's a good question. <laughs> well, I guess it's hard to do, right? You have to get all the yeah. regulation and infrastructure and technology. Yeah, I think it's a... I, I'm actually not sure, but <laughs> it's a really good question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah well, you're first, so I mean, <laughs> it, it happened. That's great. Yeah, we, we just, you know, understand the need from the investor's perspective as well as the, you know, securities firm's perspective because when they issue the new security token, they have to sell, right? Oh, but right, in order course. for them to sell the product to the investors, the investor has to have, uh, you know, funding to purchase the, you know, uh, real estate security token or security token. But people are already, you know, uh, filled up with the yeah. each, uh, security token, which they already purchased right. in the past. Right. So security firms also uh, was looking for the place that the investor can easily sell so that they can uh, get additional funding or, you know, uh, the money that they can purchase the new product as well. Yeah. So we got the needs from the, or the demand from the investors and the securities firms and the issuers. So mm. that actually environment actually allowed, may enable us to create a, you know, this market. Sounds like a great business. Yeah. Product, <laughs> product market fit. Yeah. <laughs> All right, cool. Um, and uh, just to, to linger a little more on this uh, PTS, how, how, how does this, how does this differ from like a traditional exchange uh, mm -hmm. in Japan? I think the functionality wise or well, from the investor's perspective, I think it's pr probably the same okay. and that's what we wanted. Mm -hmm. But uh, of course that the product which we handle is completely different because the traditional exchange handles like Japanese equities, stocks or like uh, 
you know, index funds or, you know, futures and derivatives, right? But uh, what we handle is, of course, the security mm. token. Yeah. So that is the biggest difference from the other exchanges. Right, 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 gotcha. Um, who is the target audience for ODX? I mean, you, you've talked about these three, three parties that mm. um, they needed you before this. Yeah. Um, but, but in more, uh, sorry, let me actually change this. In a more general uh, sense, who is the target for like a security token? Yeah, in think? Japan, it's a real, uh, retail investors, the mass retail investors. And also like uh, when we talk about the real estate investment, uh, we wanted to you know, enable the retail or mass retail investors to be able to invest in the real estate. That's the reason why we also wanted to use a blockchain or security, security token uh, in order to fractionali fractionalize the real estate into the small portion so that you know, ordinary investors, retail investors can purchase uh, real estate and invest into the real estate. So our target so far, or well for now, is the real uh, retail investors. Mm, yeah, mm -hmm. and basically, um, uh, so these real estate security tokens they have a uh, maturity, yep. and then they have a, a dividend or a yes. coupon? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, yep. I see, gotcha. Um, and this is, you currently uh, are working in Japan right now, mm -hmm. because, I mean, amazing uh, setup of regulation. It's yep. mm -hmm. very comprehensive. There's no, like, uh, what's it called? Unknowns in terms of, <laughs> or, 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 you know, I'm, I'm thinking about America, because I'm from America, yeah. where <laughs> you could never do this. Do you guys have any uh, plans to expand to other uh, regions or, or to other products or anything like that? Yeah, that is what we are aiming for. But of course, the regulation mm -hmm. that you talked yeah, about, yeah, yeah. it actually, we, we have to you know, overcome yes. such a hard or, yeah. or many you know, regulatory compli complications uh, at the moment. But we do a communication, having a communication with the other exchange, uh, exchanges in the other countries in order to make it happen. So that is our plan, of course, but it may take some more time. Yeah, that's my yeah, 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 yeah. understanding. Very, very interesting. Yeah. Um, are you also looking at like, uh, uh, I would say, areas that are a little more local, like in Asia? Like I'm thinking about Singapore or Korea or some of these other kind of more blockchain friendly yeah. countries? Yeah, probably to start with Singapore, Korea, or other Asian countries. I think we want to communicate uh, more closely with them first. And of course, we want to expand it to like a Europe and then the US region. You know, once their you know, regulation is established a bit more. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was talking with uh, <laughs> someone earlier today and um, they, they told me that, uh, that lots of companies in, for example, Japan or Singapore are looking at America as an opportunity mm -hmm. because American companies can't um, kind of create their businesses, but mm -hmm. then businesses in uh, Japan or Singapore, they can get the, that experience, mm -hmm. they can create their business, and then once, the, once America finally like, wakes up mm -hmm. and changes, oh, you guys can business. come in more yeah, quickly, yeah. Mm -hmm. which um, I, I agree with, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, anyway, thank you so much yep. for taking a uh, time out. I think this kind of product is, I'm uh, sorry, this kind of business is amazing. Um, and I am so glad that Japan is, has made this regulation and that businesses like you can grow and, and, and flourish. Yeah, thank you very much. I'm glad to be here. Appreciate it. Thank you.